Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening and welcome to Zoom Auto Limited's Q1 FY24 earnings conference call. From Zoom Auto's management team, we have with us today Dipinder Goyal, Founder and Chief Executive Officer, Akshan Goyal, Chief Financial Officer, Alvinder Singh Dinsa, Founder and CEO of Linkit, and Kunal Saru, Head of Corporate Development. Before we begin, a few quick announcements for the attendees. Anything said on this call which reflects outlook for the future or which could be construed as a forward looking statement may involve risks and uncertainties such statements or comments are not guarantees of future performance and actual results may differ from those statements additionally please note that this earnings call is scheduled for a duration of 45 minutes and we will be starting directly with the q&a section of the call if you wish to ask a question please use the raise hand feature available on your zoom dashboard we will announce your name on the call and unmute your line post which you can proceed with your question we will wait for a minute while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Mr. Sachin Salgaonkar from Bank of America. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, congratulations for a great set of numbers. I have three questions. Uh, first question is regarding the 11% QOQ GOV growth. Uh, clearly, the four reasons what you guys have given is clear, but just wanted to check uh, how much was the IPL impact and any way you guys could uh, quantify that. Hi, Sachin. Uh, thank you for your questions. Akshan, this side. Uh, so, you know, IPL over the years, we've seen last few years as, uh, you know, we've seen that it doesn't have too much of an impact on our business, except for a few matches, matches towards the flag end. So I think seasonality is more to do with uh, the weather, school holidays and stuff like that. And uh, this was pretty clear to us, uh, I think, year before last when the IPL actually got shifted to October uh, quarter and it was during that year that we saw that our business uh, even in the summers was still high despite there being no IPL. So I think it's fairly clear to us now that IPL has very limited impact on our business. Thanks, Akshan. And just an extension of this question, you know, is the answer similar to the World Cup which comes once every four years? So I mean like four years ago we don't know. Our business was very different. So uh, we don't have uh, uh, enough data points uh, to respond to that but in general any uh, any matches and cricket matches uh, where the viewership is very high is where we see some impact on upside uh, so we are hoping that world cup will be different uh, given it happens once in four years and it's happening in india this time so we're expecting some upside uh, but we'll have to see how it plays okay great uh, my second question is regards to aov of blinket uh, now, clearly, your AOV is much higher than most of your competitors. And for last few quarters, we had seen a sort of, you know, declining trend. But this quarter, it did, did improve. So just wanted to understand your thoughts per se, you know, how sustainable we should look at it going ahead. Hi, Sachin. This is Albinder. Uh, so like I've mentioned a couple of times before also, uh, our business, because it deals with such a wide variety of products, uh, the AOV movement uh, does tend to move with seasons as well. Uh, this quarter's AOV movement that you're seeing, part of it was also a result of the fact that we were a little bit supply constrained, uh, but that drove about 25% of the overall AOV improvement. The rest of it is, uh, you know, mostly seasonal changes, consumption patterns, especially in the core uh, FMCG and grocery space. Uh, and that's what usually drives uh, up the AOV uh, during some parts of the month. So uh, you will see more variability in AOV, uh, not consistently going up or down. Uh, but we make that into our business uh, projections and how we think about the business. Got it. Thank you. And uh, last question, just wanted to understand medium term sustainable margins in food, which is GOV as a percentage of adjusted EBITDA. So, you know, you guys said four to five percent is what you guys are looking in the next few quarters. I just wanted to understand from a medium term perspective where it could settle. Uh, next few quarters is medium term only, no? Ajay? Okay, so let me turn it, you know, from a long-term perspective, where do you guys want to, say, uh, you know, see that settling? Hard, hard to say. I think, uh, I think first we want to get to this uh, uh, kind of a margin profile, and then we'll see how the business evolves after that. Got it. Okay. Uh, all the best for future. Thanks. Thank you, Sajin. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Mr. Vijay Jain from Citigroup. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, thank you. Uh, congratulations for a great set of numbers. Uh, my question is, um, you know, just this QOQ drop in uh, employee expenses, uh, just wondering if there's anything to that. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about expenses excluding the ESOP charges. 
Uh, that's question one. Yeah, hi Vijay. Uh, so yeah, I think our uh, uh, employee expenses have come down last two quarters, and uh, I think largely a function of uh, uh, the uh, right sizing uh, that we did uh, in the December quarter. So I think all of that is fully flowing into our PNL now, uh, given that. Uh, there were some severance payouts uh, in the previous quarter. So I think that's why you see the decline. Got it. So um, Akshant, uh, fair to say this would include any annual pay hikes or uh, is that in a different cycle for you guys? So our cycle is actually July to July. So you will see that impact on uh, in the next quarter. Okay, got it. July, which I got it. My next question is on, um, you know, just a couple of things on, uh, you know, uh, uh, the delivery rider fees in general. So there was this news recently of uh, Rajasthan government uh, exploring some kind of a rule on uh, compensation to gig economy workers. So just wondering uh, if there's any clarity on how that impacts your business. And related to that, is there any adjustment to how you compensate uh, delivery riders post uh, the event at Blinket and Gurgaon? So just a broad question on uh, delivery rider side there. Yeah, which is, so I think on that one, there is we don't have full clarity yet. Uh, I think mm-hmm. it's, we're still waiting for more clarity there. And, and I think basis that we will be able to ascertain on the steps that we need to take to manage that. But at this point, I think it's a very broad based bill and there are no yeah. specific details. So we're just waiting and watching right now. Got it. And how about uh, any changes that you you have uh, implemented uh, on the Blinkit side? And just wondering on the Blinkit side, uh, have, uh, you know, your delivery costs per order changed this quarter uh, or most of the improvement is just led by the higher AOV in terms of contribution margins? Yeah. Hi, Vijit. Uh, this is Albinder. So uh, yeah, the changes that we made in uh, April uh, was more to bring all our delivery partners onto the same kind of a payout structure so that it was more even across the board. And mm-hmm. we have not made any changes beyond that. Uh, the overall okay. cost of delivery for us did not decrease significantly during the quarter. And uh, because that was not the intent of the changes that we were making as well. Uh, so the delivery payouts per order to our delivery partners have remained broadly the same. Uh, most of the improvement that you're seeing uh, on the contribution side is coming more from operating leverage uh, of our fixed assets, uh, as well as uh, improving margin profile and improving uh, average ticket size. Correct. Thanks. Uh, yeah, those were my questions. I'll just jump back into the queue. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Mr. Swapnil Porduke from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Hey, hi everyone. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Great set of numbers. I have a couple of questions on the food delivery side and a couple of uh, on the quick commerce side. Uh, first, uh, there has been a mention of uh, some risky bets that, uh, that seem to have paid off for you. Uh, would you be able to call them out? And in the same breath, uh, can you also mention uh, any more initiatives that you're working on uh, that can be termed risky here on? No, I think uh, the reference, uh, Swapnil, there was largely to the uh, 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 changes that we did on the people side uh, and, and some calls we took uh, uh, on on driving growth, you know, like launching Zomato Gold, uh, where uh, at that time we felt that there was a perception that uh, uh, that it will uh, uh, impact the business in a negative way. So I think largely that was what we meant with with this. It, it doesn't. We're not talking about any business calls here, which uh, you know, which which uh, investors are not aware of. Got it. Uh, and secondly, uh, there has been a hundred basis point Q on Q improvement in the take rates. Now, would you be able to you know call out uh, the how much of that is because of ad income, a pure play restaurant commissions, and maybe gold uh, separately? Uh, no, Sopinla, I'm sorry. We'll not be able to share those details. Okay, no worries. Uh, and uh, on the Blinkit side, uh, so uh, uh, would it be possible to share the GMV mix over there? Now, what I understand now is like your uh, non-grocery mix uh, appears to be improving. Uh, and uh, if you, it would be great if you guys can uh, call that out uh, in some form or the other. Yes, Swapnil, uh, we don't give out the breakout for um, individual uh, product categories that we sell. Uh, what we, uh, the mindset with which we operate is that we're always looking to bring more convenience across more product categories for our customer. 
So we've been increasing the size of portfolio available in 10 minutes to our customers consistently over the last one year. And that is what is leading to uh, improvement uh, in the overall, both the ticket size as well as the margins for us. And I think we will continue to do that uh, into the future as well. Got it. And and, and uh, uh, because of the disruption we saw uh, in 1Q, you know, in Delhi and in Sia, uh, did your uh, Blinkit delivery costs uh, jump up in this particular quarter? And 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 I presume that would be a one-off, but uh, uh, was that the case? And how uh, and would that help you improve your uh, contribution margins going ahead? Uh, some. So uh, I think uh, the delivery cost uh, changes, like we mentioned, uh, were not significant uh, in this quarter. And we don't expect that number to be uh, to change dramatically going forward as well. The intent of the changes for us was to make sure that uh, our entire delivery fleet was uh, on a more fair and equitable payout structure. Uh, so I don't think that that is something that we are targeting. Uh, the disruptions where they affected us was uh, because there was more misunderstanding on the ground. Uh, some of our stores were shut for a few days. Uh, and even after they recovered, uh, the number of partners coming back and working, uh, it took some time to recover. And that's why we had uh, a weaker April and May. And we only started recovering towards the end of May and early June. Uh, but post that, we've recovered that. Got it. And just the last question, if we can squeeze in. Uh, how much of that $320 million that you were uh, expecting to uh, you know, burn in Blinkit uh, has already been factored in? And, uh, and how much is the balance uh, I, I know that you won't be spending the entire amount. You mentioned that, but just to get, to get a sense of that. So, Sapnil will share that number, uh, you know, uh, once we get to break even profitability. I think uh, uh, so, so far we are still sort of trying to calibrate on, on how much do we need to spend incrementally from here on to, to get to break even. Okay, no worries. Uh, thanks a lot, for uh, guys, for this opportunity and great set of numbers again. All the best. Thank you, Sapnil. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Mr. Manish Adupia from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Yes. Hi. Good evening. Thank you so much for taking my questions. Um, and thank you for all the disclosure around numbers and guidance as you think about business for the next uh, few years. Uh, just a few clarifications on some of the numbers you've given in the shareholder letter. Uh, letter. So you've called out a growth rate in Blinkit of 60% plus on GOV uh, for the foreseeable future and overall adjusted revenue growth of 40% plus. Uh, so back of the envelope calculation would suggest maybe 25% plus or 30% thereabouts and for food delivery growth uh, in the next few years. Firstly, do you agree with that number? Food delivery growth of 25-30% uh, for the next couple of years is what you're targeting? So we haven't uh, uh, we haven't stated any growth targets or guidance for food delivery, Manish, uh, and so can't comment on this. Right, and and Akshan, does the comment from your previous quarters where incrementally uh, most of the growth in food delivery will come from um, user growth? That comment would still stand, right? So if let's say uh, 25, 30 percent you were to grow, then that large part should come from user growth. Would that be a fair, fair assumption? Yes, yes, Manish. And even in this quarter, you have seen the MTU grow. So we expect that to sort of continue. Understood. Uh, my second question, maybe to Albinder. So Albinder, in the question in the shareholder letter, you've said that you're determined to deliver on growth and profitability over the next few months. So again, I mean, are we to read that you're guiding for EBITDA break even over the next few months? Or did you mean something else? I think we meant what we wrote. So, so we've mentioned four quarters anyway. So that's twelve months. So, <laughs> I don't know. Got if we, if I'm not sure if I we got your question, Manish. Sure. Okay. Fair enough. No, thank you for clarifying. And third, again, uh, in the shareholder letter, you've talked about, um, you know, users of capital or capital allocation. So, thank you for the color there. But uh, since you've started generating cash now, and obviously you have a large uh, balance sheet as well. So from a capital allocation standpoint, uh, if you are, let's say, not focusing on any near-term M&A or acquisition, uh, would you be considering any form of shareholder return or that is not in the foreseeable future? Uh, so not at this point, uh, Manish. Uh, we don't, we have thought about uh, that, but at this point, we want to maintain the cash that we have. Uh, but down the line, uh, we continue to reconsider that position as our business scales and as, uh, you know, competitive dynamics change around us. Got it. Thank you so much for taking my question. Thank you, Manish. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Mr. Gaurav Rateria from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. 
Hi, congratulations on a great set of numbers. A few questions. The first is on contribution margin in food now at 6.4%. For you to hit your target of 4 to 5% registered EBITDA margins, where should this number settle down and what will be the key drivers for that? So, Gaurav, largely, I think uh, there is some bit of operating leverage which will continue to scale in this business. So, if we have to uh, if the margin, if the beta margin goes up by two percentage points, uh, the contribution we can get there even with a slightly lower contribution margin growth, right? So, so ballpark even in the past we have spoken about about eight percent contribution to GOV in this business. I think that is what we are aiming for, and and we believe that should get us to the four to five percent beta margin in this business. Got it. Second question is uh, how much of uh, hyper pure growth came from your synergies between Hyperpure and Blinkit. And is there a case to believe that quick commerce can leverage the food delivery uh, delivery footprint and get some synergies there as well? Uh, <clears throat> sorry, uh, on this, can you elaborate on your second part of the question? Not how, much, on... how much of Hyperpure growth really came because of the synergies between the Blinkit and Hyperpure business, which you mentioned in your shareholders okay. letter? Yeah, and the continuing question is that, is there a case to believe that quick commerce can also get some synergies from leveraging the delivery footprint of the food delivery business? Yeah, so I think uh, uh, as far as your first part of the question is concerned, uh, 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 Hyperpure business is growing on both sides now. I think the core uh, restaurant supplies business is, is growing really well. Uh, at at more than 100% year on year, and uh, equally as we mentioned in the last couple of shareholders letter, uh, you know, uh, we're also now supplying to sellers on Blinkit, so that business is scaling as well. So uh, so I think they're uh, both the segments are growing well, and uh, you know, to your second question, I like synergies uh, with between quick commerce and food delivery. I think we've spoken about a few uh, in the past. Uh, that was a question, right? Just want to confirm, Gaurav, that your question is on quick commerce and food delivery synergies or something else. Yeah, food, uh, synergies between the two business, especially with respect to delivery cost. Yeah, I'll, okay. uh, I'll take that, Gaurav. I think the uh, we've explored this quite a bit and uh, so far uh, we are taking it uh, slowly to make sure that both the businesses, especially in the overlap, uh, overlapping cities, they're fairly sizable. Uh, so we have uh, taken some initiatives, mostly on the technology and the platform side, uh, to be able to get better synergies out of both of them. Uh, and over time, I think we will continue to make, uh, you know, processes and uh, our way of operating better to be able to get more synergies out of uh, the fairly large footprint of riders that we have across both the platforms. Uh, but as of now, like that is not something which is an active area as both the platforms are growing uh, fairly quickly, and we need to make sure that we have rider supplies for both of them uh, across the board. Got it. Last question from me. Uh, any data point on uh, the new customer addition uh, during the quarter on a gross basis? Thank you. Yeah, Gaurav, so I think uh, it remains healthy. Uh, uh, it's in line with the numbers you have shared in the past. So, uh, I think that uh, as far as new user addition is con- concerned, it continues to remain robust. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the random Mr. Sudhir Guntupalli. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, uh, hello. Um, uh, thanks for taking my question and uh, congratulations on a great set of numbers. Uh, so just on your uh, uh, guidance of 40% year on year, 40% plus year on year registered revenue growth for at least the next couple of years. Uh, so, so Akshan, what is uh, giving you that confidence, especially in an economy where the nominal GDP growth is averaging just around 10%, you're talking about 4x uh, GDP growth multiplier. Uh, that is number one. And number two, till last quarter, we are talking about consumption slowdown, discretionary uh, slowdown, so on and so forth. And now we are talking about confidence of uh, 40% plus year-on-year growth, at least for the next couple of years. So this looks like almost a 180 degree turn in terms of our guidance slash aspiration. So what has uh, driven that change? Is it entirely led by the strong uh, performance that uh, uh, we had seen in this quarter? So uh, Sudhir, uh, hi, Akshan, the side. So I'm not sure, uh, 
I am wondering if your uh, if your understanding of this forty percent is only for food delivery because this is a guidance at the overall revenue level, which uh, even in the last four five quarters has been north of fifty percent year on year, right? So, so I think given we have a portfolio of business and while food delivery is growth has been relatively muted last few quarters, which is what you're also saying, but at the same time hyper pure dining out and blinked have grown really well, and. Uh, i think the the message here that we wanted to give is that as a portfolio we'll continue to grow at that pace while some business may grow faster than others yeah uh, sure akshan no um, i i get your point and uh, to one of the previous questions you have sort of not called out the growth but uh, 40% overall portfolio level growth does imply uh, let's say food delivery growth of uh, at least the 25 to 30% uh, kgr over the next couple of years which seem to be a very very big ask so i am essentially asking what is driving that confidence both in in the in the food delivery business compared to where we were 3 4 months back if you look at this last one quarter we've grown 11% uh, on gov term sequentially and around 15% on revenue basis for the food delivery business right so if we are doing that in one quarter i think we can easily aim for a 25 30% growth on revenue on food for this year and the next i think uh uh the assumption here is that uh the worst is behind us in terms of the demand slowdown that we saw and from here on incrementally we should see that recover and and hence uh, we feel confident about being able to deliver this top line growth sure and thanks for that color and just one clarification so this does not in any way include any of the future acquisitions that you may have in mind or anything of that sort right this is the pure organic number that we are talking about just like to like Okay Akshan thank you so much and uh, uh, congratulations once again for the brilliant set of numbers thank you Sudeep thank you next question is from the line of Mr Mukul Garg from Motilal Oswal Financial Services please go ahead hello yeah hi mukul um, hey um great quarter guys congratulations uh just a, a couple of questions uh, you know first on the uh, the take rate uh, during this quarter uh, you know i know this this came up earlier also but uh, can you just uh, help understand uh, you know what steps uh, were really undertaken this quarter because actually you have in past mentioned that you know incrementally uh, taking up that take rate would be a, a lot more gradual but the hello mr mukul are you on the line seems like we have some sort of a technical glitch or uh, we can circle back to mr garg later in the interim next question is from the line of mr vivek maheshwari from jeffries please go ahead Hi, am I audible? Yeah, please go ahead. Okay, hi. A uh, couple of things. First, on the food delivery, Akshan, the the you know what the previous participant asked. Uh, when we talk to QSR companies on the delivery side, you know their outlook is not as buoyant as or as positive as let's say you are. Is there a difference between let's say independents versus let's say chain restaurant? Is there any such trend which is underway, which is why you know let's say. Uh, Uh, you are seeing a let's say or your outlook is far positive as compared to the qsr folks yeah hi vivek so i think uh, you know uh, as we mentioned in the past uh, past uh, qsr contributes uh, you know single digit percentage point of our business overall so most of our business on our platform happens through uh, smaller restaurants and and uh, a few outlet chains so yeah at least uh, as far as uh, our business is concerned and and the data that we are seeing uh, uh we we feel there's no reason to believe that we should not be able to grow well from year on right at least on a year on year basis okay okay and given the presence sakshant you have uh, you know um, and i'm sure you're you know you would be interacting with those restaurants given where the food inflation uh, is isn't there a you know see again honestly i don't know beyond qsr as much but shouldn't there be a bit of a stress uh, that restaurants should be facing right now given you know the, the input prices have actually hardened quite a bit 
which is actually quite uh, contrary to that uh, a lot of small restaurants uh, given the lack of growth in their business in the last 6 9 months we are seeing our spending aggressively on ad sales on our platform uh, to grow uh, right so uh, and and that trend is what is also led to uh, a part of the take rate increase that that a uh, couple of you have asked us in, uh, on this call in the past so yeah i think uh, uh, the prices are going up uh, there's inflation but uh, uh, we have seen uh, these small restaurants take up menu prices and and in turn and along with that spend on ads to get to get growth and it seems like it's working for them okay okay got it uh, the second point on food delivery uh, margins again akshan uh, two and a half percent and there has been obviously a dramatic improvement i i don't think most were believing when you first you know highlighted those things but from here to let's say a journey to 5% should that be more moderate and through the course of the year uh, will we see more moderate moderate gains as we go forward so hard to predict the exact path vivek i think uh, we'll play it by the year uh, it's a highly competitive market uh, there are multiple variables at play here including the demand uh, seasonality uh, and competition so i think we feel confident of getting there in few quarters uh, you know but exactly from here on uh, whether it's going to be linear or not is hard to say right now okay got it and on the on the quick commerce blinket side uh, you know you have mentioned about 100 net store additions this year what does that signal uh, or or you know these 100 stores are essentially going you going into newer towns and uh, cities is is that what it is or this will be primarily in the existing locations and you know the fact that you are now so you have been you know pruning down the stores and now that you know fi24 you are guiding for 100 uh, stores so what has driven this change uh, you know this uh, i mean i i was expecting at some point but fi24 100 additions seems that you know you are far more confident uh, over here hi vivek uh, albinder here so uh, most of the new store additions which we are guiding for uh, is going to be in our existing geographies a lot of this has been driven by the fact that we have polygons uh, which we are serving with existing stores that are reaching fairly high order numbers and reaching maturity and we still see a lot of headroom for growth in those localities uh, so a lot of this growth is going to come from uh, store expansion uh, of our network within our existing geographies itself uh, we are uh, obviously uh, cautiously expanding into new geographies as well adding some Uh, more flavor and uh, variety into the kind of uh, neighborhoods that we serve and the cities that we serve, including some tier two cities. But majority of the hundred store expansion that you'll see will come from high confidence polygons where we already have significant volumes. Interesting, interesting. And last question, more philosophically, you know, um, uh, your release talks about or the letter talks about, you know, uh, dining out or uh, or uh, you know, going out as a separate app. and you have again mentioned about the brand but you know in this quarter also 7% of gov let's say comes from uh, dining out do you really need a separate app and is it worth it you know given that given that you already have a you know brilliant uh, uh, franchise with zomato app why why you know put it separately have you done any uh, let's say study on this which says that it will be better if you you know park it in a different app i can understand blinkit because that was more organic it, it was more you know the the traffic was always there uh, in grofers and that's what uh, you know you want that's why you probably wanted to continue but putting it separately does that really help so vivek I, right now uh, just to clarify by the way we are not saying that uh, this uh, this business will not be on the zomato app even if we have a separate app right so i think it's it's an idea we are experimenting with right now uh, and uh, uh, even if we do that uh dining out will continue to remain on zomato app right and 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 we'll then see you know what we learn from that and whether that stays the separate in the new app stays or not so i think that's all up for experimentation at this point uh, we don't have a very firm point of view on that okay interesting thank you and wishing you all the best thank you next question is from lino mr ashwin mehta from ambit please go ahead yeah hi can you hear me yeah hi ashwin Uh, hi akshant uh, thanks for the question congrats on good set of numbers uh, so, so the first question is in terms of take rates so we've seen almost a 200 pip increase in take rates in food over the last year uh, how much more scope do you see uh, in terms of increases there uh, and then the second one is in terms of blinkit 
uh, wherein uh, if you can give some color in terms of the advertising uh, pickup in Blinkit, then how should that affect the take rates in Blinkit? Yeah, so uh, so large part of the uh, take rate increase on the food side uh, that you're talking about, Ashwin, is uh, because of the growth in ad sales that we've seen. Uh, and as I mentioned, in response to the previous question, uh, we are seeing more and more restaurants uh, wanting to uh, spend on our platform to market their business and grow. And and that trend seems to sustain and continue for now. Right? So uh, we don't know uh, uh, till what level can, can this ad sales revenue grow for us. And uh, equally, I think likewise on, on the Blinkit business, uh, we've seen ads uh, as a decent driver of or a meaningful driver of uh, revenue expansion, top line expansion for Blinkit. And uh, the journey there is uh, uh, much less mature than it is on food. And uh, we believe that there are meaningful gains to be made on ad sales on the Blinkit business and, and which should drive a large part of our uh, progress to profitability from here on. Okay. Okay. And just one more. Uh, have you seen any impacts uh, till now of the floods and some of the disruptions that have happened, especially in North India, Haryana, uh, for that matter? Uh, any impacts that you see as you get into the next quarter? Yes, uh, Shwin. So I think these all these events uh, do have a hyperlocal impact uh, on our business. Uh, even, uh, for example, in Gurgaon, we've, we've had... Uh, some local issues last few days, and that has impacted our ability to service uh, some some of our customers in in few neighborhoods. So I think that impact, uh, as you all mentioned, also was there in the last couple of months because of untimely heavy rains. So we've sort of navigated all of that, uh, and and that did have an impact on the uh, growth and the, of the business uh, over the last couple of months. Okay, uh, thank you, and all the best. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Mr. Nikhil Chaudhary from Nuwama, Nuwama Equities. Please go ahead. Hey, hi. Thanks for the opportunity and congrats on uh, such a good set of numbers. Uh, first is uh, on the 100 store uh, uh, increase for Blinkit. And uh, what Alvinder uh, clarified that it's primarily in the existing geography. So is it safe to assume the GOV, which is about 620, 625,000, Per store that would be a steady state number uh, given you are uh, increasing the store count in existing geography and why i'm asking this uh, one of your uh, large competitor uh, mentioned that uh, gov for them is still higher so any clarity there and you can <clears throat> i think uh, the gov uh, per store uh, that we display i think it uh, depends more on whether we open a lot of new locations and whether we are opening those new locations in the kind of high geography, in the high, you know, order density locations where we expect the demand to uh, increase a lot faster. So it's hard to put a track on whether it will uh, go up, go down a little bit, and then come back up. Uh, I think that depends a lot on a number of factors, which includes space of store opening and also the quality of the polygons in which we are opening those stores. Sure. <laughs> Sure, sure. That. Second question is regarding the employer cost as a percentage of revenue. We have seen it uh, decline by more than 1,000 basis points in last one year. And uh, obviously, some of it is because of the synergy between the two platform, Blinkit and Zomato, which you mentioned, and also due to, you know, overall decline in supply side challenges. What would be the steady state, uh, you know, as a percentage of revenue uh, employer cost would be? Anything uh, you're targeting? So I think we uh, we feel uh, at this point, uh, the organization is right-sized for the businesses that we have. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, you know, September quarter is when uh, the impact of annual uh, appraisals will also impact that cost and it should go up from here. So here on, I think it should grow at, uh, at some multiple of inflation. We don't expect it to change meaningfully uh, uh, either ways. Sure. This is the last question on uh, what you mentioned that 30% of your GAV is coming from Zomato Gold. So any uh, uh, data point you can provide in the last quarter, you commented that uh, AOV of gold uh, were lesser, right? Uh, uh, because many people are ordering using uh, uh, using the same account within the family. Any color how uh, basically the behavior of, uh, let's say, gold member versus the known gold? 
Oh, Nikhil, uh, Punal here. I don't think we mentioned that the AOVs were lesser. What we mentioned is the MTUs uh, got impacted to some yeah. extent. Is you know multiple individual users in the same family were ordering uh, from the same account, right? Um, so uh, we don't see any major shift in in the uh, position that we saw even earlier. So AOVs are slightly higher than. Uh, normal AOVs and uh, you know the uh, frequency of ordering, of course, is significantly higher. Part of that could be because of uh, you know the clubbing of orders, but part of it is also gen- genuinely because you know there are free delivery benefits and other benefits. Sure, that's it from Masai. Thanks for the opportunity and good luck for the next period. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. In the interest of time, we will now take the last one to two questions. The next question is from the line of Mr. Dipesh Mehta from MK. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, two questions. First of all, just want to get sense about how inflation impact our business across segment. So if you can give some sense about how one should look revenue impact and margin impact, uh, food inflation as well as overall inflation. Uh, second question is about hyper pure business. Uh, if you can provide some sense about how many restaurant partner, let's say we have now supplying the ingredient and in terms of percentage of supply sourced by them, how it has moved, let's say your back versus now, if you can provide some color. Thanks. Hi, Dipesh Kunal here. So I think uh, I'll take the first question first. So like uh, Akshant mentioned this now as well. Uh, yes, uh, food inflation is impacting restaurants, but because their sales are getting impacted. They're also ending up spending more on advertising and, and trying to grow the business. So I think uh, overall, yes, there is some stress, but I think they're also taking the right initiatives to ensure that growth continues on the platform. Uh, I think this, uh, you know, uh, inflation being up and down will be a characteristic that all businesses have to deal with and they are also dealing with. I think uh, so that's uh, on the inflation front. On the uh, on the hyperpure, your que- second question was around hyperpure, and uh, so over there, look, uh, I think the uh, like we pointed out in the shareholder letter, uh, one of the initiatives that we took up over there was to increase our minimum order value uh, for restaurants to order on the platform, and that resulted in some uh, churning out of the small unprofitable restaurants who were not meeting that uh, minimum order criteria. And uh, to that extent, yes, there was some churn, but I think overall it resulted in an increase in revenue because, uh, you know, restaurants that were on the fence were able to increase their average order values and that also had a positive impact on the profitability of the business. Now, the question is about the sourcing changes in terms of percentage of uh, sourcing, what used to happen versus now. The same restaurant partner, if you can give some color. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, the, the same restaurant, there is going to be that gradual increase in wallet share also, so that we will continue to see. Uh, new restaurants start with, you know, a few commodities and then eventually as they build trust, uh, they continue to uh, expand the basket that they order from Hyperpure. So that's a gradual process and that you're seeing in our current numbers as well. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Mr. Manish Podar from Motila Loswal AMC. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, I, I think uh, great set of results. Thanks for giving me the opportunity. So I have three questions. One is, uh, you know, if if you could call out, you know, uh, you know, what is the sort of investment which is done on gold, uh, in your view? And you know, uh, in my 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 estimate, it's somewhere in a high single digit number. So, uh, you know, what is the sort of investment up here, and uh, where do you think this will normalize? So, would this number be three rupees, four rupees? I'm just trying to understand. It's on per order basis, whenever it is, you know, FI twenty five twenty six. I'm just trying to understand where does this number stack up at steady state. So Manish, uh, hard to say that at this point. I think uh, uh, in in our business, uh, there are pockets where we have to invest at different periods of time and and then sort of adapt depending on how the market is changing, how the consumer habits are changing, and how the competition is uh, behaving. So, uh, so uh, you know, at this point, I I won't be able to comment on a specific guidance on how much are we investing here and and where that is likely to go going forward. Mm-hmm. Okay, 
and uh, a- any any thoughts on you know uh, uh, this platform fee which is you know being levied by the peer set you know uh, we were uh, do we want to uh, roll it have we tried it in some certain micro markets just a thoughts around that yeah so it's a business call uh, manish so uh, we we are aware about that and and i think we'll take a call if we think this is the right thing for the business at this point uh, uh, we haven't done that i mean there is no platform fee on our platform okay and uh, then the third bit is uh, if you look at the restaurant count you know in the last two quarters uh, you know despite uh, cutting down on uh, you know the the cities or the tail uh, in the food delivery you know the restaurant count has increased so have we added any new categories or you know uh, are there new restaurants coming out just just how, can you just uh, help me understand what is happening up there yeah so manish these are largely the new restaurants i think that we continue to onboard every month every quarter so the number you see in our disclosure is the net number of restaurants but every quarter there are num- uh, there are a number of restaurants which shut down and a lot more of uh, open up a new restaurants come up right or uh, there are also pockets uh, in the country where we are not adequately penetrated in terms of having existing rest- restaurants on our platform so that also adds to the number of restaurants so i think it's a combination of all of this which which is right now leading to the moderate uptick in the number of restaurants that you see so there's there's no material new category let's say which has got added as such no 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 there is no okay just one last one if i can so in terms of uh, fleet uh, i think uh, the delivery riders are getting cross utilized you know uh, i think in some micro markets uh, across you know different uh, segments let's say in terms of uh, utilizing it with either your uh, holding company or with you know other entities just any sense you know uh, in, if you can give me qualitatively or quantitatively you know how does this benefit in terms of let's say you know delivery cost or any any sort of sense does that get you know there can be 20% savings on that over 3 years just any any sort of understanding on that will be helpful thank you hi manish uh, this is kunal here this is not a specific strategy or uh, that we are uh, deploying uh, we don't intend to use our necessarily use our fleet or delivery partner network for uh, and open it up to other uh, sort of uh, uh, you know use cases or other uh, entities we use um, so at this point uh, you know it's not part of our strategy okay okay Th- thank you so much and uh, again uh, good sort of namas thanks thank you next question is from the line of mr niket shah please go ahead yeah uh, thanks for the opportunity uh, congrats once again uh, to the entire team uh, i just had two questions one is uh, in the presser you did highlight about uh, uh, blinkit adjusted abit in the next four quarters would it be possible for you to share with the broad levers or you know how are you really looking at it which are the to the broad levers to really move towards profitability and also uh, uh, in the past we did highlight when food delivery used to be a loss making business about how you think about food delivery business from an ebitda standpoint to reach to about 3 to 5% ebitda margin over the medium term it now looks really achievable but would it be possible for you to share the similar kind of a thought process for blinkit over the medium to longer term uh, and the second um you know you did allude that uh, on the ad side you've seen significant growth uh, which is obviously more your take rates higher um, would it be possible for you to quantify is it volume led pricing led uh, or have you taken pricing increase on the ad side yeah thanks so much and i guess so i'll take the the first question uh, so you know looking at a blinkit business i think uh, our aim is to get to just a bit of positive over the next four quarters uh, and i think the levers for doing that or what we've been talking about through the calls uh, earlier as well that uh, you know we do see a lot of operating leverage in this business uh, we do see a lot of expansion of the wallet share of customers because they're now starting to buy a lot more things than just the core grocery categories from us uh, and think that leads to both uh, order growth uh, revenue growth and uh, obviously we are able to harness the operating leverage that exists in a high fixed cost model like ours so i think that's uh, there's nothing uh, out of the ordinary in terms of how we think we will get to uh, adjust it a bit a positive and of course uh, there will be innovations along the way that we hope that we continue to make to get to that uh, juncture um do you want to take the yeah. that one so on the 
uh, on the ad sales bit, uh, uh, Nikhil, to answer your question, I think it's largely been uh, volume led. We haven't we haven't taken really much of a price increase during this time. Got it, got it. So uh, that lever does remain with you at some point of time, uh, you know. Yes. If yeah. got it. And just one more final question, if I may squeeze in: uh, Is it possible for you to call out uh, a range of what has been uh, the drag because of Zomato Gold in this quarter? Uh, no, Niketa, I, I I would not want to share that information. Else, it's, it's it's sensitive from a okay. competitive standpoint. Yeah, sorry. Got it. Got it. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, best of luck and congrats once again. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We will now conclude this conference call. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.